First thing I want to do tonight, I want to give thanks to our pastor for allowing me to speak tonight. Uh, man, this is an incredible opportunity. Um, we have the world's best pastor. Everybody give it up for him. Second, I want to give some disclaimers. Uh, number one, I've been sick the past week or so. So if I begin to hack up a lung, y'all just say amen or something. Because, like, it won't be pretty and we're just going to have to move on. Uh, number two, this topic is something, this topic that we're talking about tonight is not easy. It's not something that's just going to be, going to be answered after one 15-minute sermon by a youth pastor. You know, it's going, to take, it's going to take a little bit. However, I know that the words that are being spoken out of my mouth tonight, out of uh, Pastor Charlie's or Pastor Richie's, is going to help somebody in this room. And guys, it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be glorious. So, let's get started. Since I've been praying about this message, God has been leading me to Paul, which is ironic because it's led every pastor pretty much to Paul. But... <laughs> We, he led me to Paul, and I was like, why Paul? See, Paul is a man who wrote three-fourths of the New Testament. But for a man who is constantly pursuing Jesus, for a man who's constantly living out the, the, the great commission, who's constantly doing these things for God, he goes through a lot of suffering. He goes through a lot of things that many of us would turn around and we'd leave our faith for, but he sticks through it. And each of us are in here because Paul played a crucial part in the beginning of the first church. However, we can always learn from our suffering. And tonight we're going to look at Paul and learn two specific lessons from his suffering. So we're going to spend a lot of our time in the last part of Acts. And I'm going to give you all a little bit of a uh, backstory on what's happening. So Paul's pretty much spent the last seven, eight chapters in and out of jail because he's a, he's a rebel. Y'all, they don't want him talking about Jesus, but guess what he's going to do? He's going to talk about Jesus. He's going to get this church started because he has a commandment and he's going to do it right. So he's in and out of jail, but in chapter 27, he sets sail as a prisoner for Rome. However, when he, he's on his way, a storm hits. And when he's on that, when he gets hit by the storm, that ship, the ship wrecks. It crashes. Uh, and he gets shipwrecked and he gets lost at sea for multiple weeks. And then all of a sudden, after being stranded, he, he gets on, like he, he, what's the word? He gets washed up to shore. And he's on land. With him and everybody, all of his little uh, prisoner guard buddies, they're all there, right? And... They decide we're going to start a fire. So they start a fire, and Paul's being a good man, and he's stirring the fire to make it, make it go a little bit more. When he's stirring the fire, a, a snake jumps out and bites him on the hand. Y'all, Paul's had a couple, rough couple weeks right here. So he, he, he gets bit by the snake, and all he does is he just shakes the snake off, and he keeps on going. And everybody's amazed by this guy. And they're like, who is this? But directly after this is where we're going to pick up. Uh, but before I get into that, this is what I want to say. The thing about suffering is that it will always lead you to places you never expected to be. But listen, this is the most important part. But it will always lead you into the position that God wants you to be. Where you are right now is where the Lord wants you to be. Why? Because he's got a purpose, he has a plan, and he's going to walk you through it. Just like he's walking Paul. Because here's the thing. When each of us were growing up, we wanted to grow up and be doctors, lawyers. Me, I wanted to be an NFL quarterback. That's all I'm going to say, y'all. I got baby hands. I'm sure y'all noticed that. But none of us wished that one day we would be divorced. That one day we would be addicted to drugs. One day that we'd be an alcoholic. One day that we'd have a job that we hate. But we can't help any of that. We can't help the things that life throws at us. Yeah. I did a series uh, about two, two years ago with a youth group. Probably, okay, I'm going to say the name anyways. It's called Holy Shift. Um, 
Uh, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> here's the thing. All right, I'm gonna keep going. See, this, the intro every week was this. Life is 10% how you make it and 90% how you take it. And this is what it means, that life is full of reactions. Man, you cannot help the, the, situ- the cards that are given to you, but what you can control is what you do with those cards that are given to you. And this is the thing about Paul. Paul is the master of reactions. After being shipwrecked, after being hungry, after being bit by a snake, you know what this guy does? He goes to the nearest town. In 28.7 it says, there was an estate nearby that belonged to Publius, probably butchered that name, the chief official of the island. He welcomed us into his home and showed us generous hospitality for three days. His father was sick in bed, suffering from fever and dysentery. Paul went in to see him and after prayer, placed his hands on his head and healed him. When this had happened, get this, the rest of the sick on the island came and were cured. They honored us in many ways, and when we were ready to sail, they furnished us with the supplies we needed. The first lesson we're going to learn tonight is this. Your suffering can and will put you in a position to help others. See, guys, the lessons, the lessons learned today, the victories earned tomorrow, will help someone who is in your shoes down the line. Because here's the thing, guys. I went through many petty problems when I was in junior high and high school. I went through breakups. I went through losing friends. I went through these things that, in the grand scheme of things, the older you get, you're like, that's nothing. To these junior hires and high school here, high schoolers here, that's a big deal. And see, me going through these things at a young age allowed me to minister to them, to reach them on their level. See, the, the, the suffering that I went through yesterday and the victory that I had the next day is helping them right now. So the, the suffering you're going through today and the victory you have tomorrow will help somebody in your exact same shoes down the line. I promise you that. Whew, y'all got me excited, y'all. See, the victories I have today will help their struggles tomorrow. The victories that I have tomorrow may help my kid when they get to my age. They may help you. And the victories that you have may end up helping me. Because here's the thing, guys. Everybody, like, you may, what's the, what's the saying? You may be the only Jesus that somebody sees. You may be the only testimony that someone sees. And the moment you're going through something, but you don't lose faith, but you keep rocking, and you keep moving, and you keep your eyes on Jesus, and you get out of that storm, and oh, and you give glory to God, guess what, guys? They're going to see that, and they're going to say, I need what you have. I need that Jesus. Oh, man, y'all got me going right now. I'm sorry. Oh. So many times, here's the thing, so many times we sit there and we ask God to change our circumstances. Oh, but my prayer tonight is not for my circumstances to change, but for my heart to change. Because why? Listen, 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 guys. I want to glorify my God in the midst of my circumstances. I don't want to have to wait for the ideal ones. Paul didn't say, y'all, let's just wait until my hand heals. Oh, y'all, I didn't realize that. He got bit on the hand by a snake, and he goes into that town, and he lays that exact hand on that person and heals him. Oh, y'all, that was good. That's good. I got to wrap this up. (laughs) Sorry about that. Uh, Lesson number two. Let's go to lesson number two. We're still going to be talking with Paul. Um, In Romans 5, it says this. Not only so, but we also glory, glorify show glory, in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. This is what Paul says. Lesson number two, our sufferings can mold us into who God wants us to be. Paul teaches us that through our sufferings, he found his biggest blessings, In my life, in my sufferings, I've always found my biggest blessings. See, for me, I lost my grandfather at a young age. My grandfather, 
He was, he was my rock star. He was my idol. Y'all, I love this guy. Lost him at age 10. Um, he was the one that I went to with any questions about my faith. I wasn't yet a Christian. And so sometimes that can completely turn somebody one way. But the Lord used that situation for me to give my life to him. And, that, and through that darkness was whenever I made my commitment. And see, through our sufferings, we find our character. Why? Because desperation shows us our deepest, most desires. This is what that means. So I'm going to share a quick story, very, very quick. Um, I can't swim. Well, I can't swim well. Um, I'm, I'm just, I float now, so it helps. Uh, but I didn't used to have all this uh, muscle. And so <laughs> when I would swim, oh, man, I'm sorry about my voice. Uh, I would go out, and y'all know in like the lakes, they would have that little area. It's like, hey, don't go past this area, or you're going to get hit by a boat. And so we don't go past that area, but we go to that area. Like we go to the line, and we play on the rope, and we do whatever. Well, it's pretty deep out there. And the Lord didn't bless me with six foot four height. He blessed me with five foot seven and a half height. And so I'm out here, and I'm like, all my friends go out, and I'm sitting there, and I'm just like chilling. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go back to shore with my friends. So I go out there. I swim a little bit or doggy paddle a little bit. And I go to put my feet down. And I, I sink. Like, I don't sink all the way. But I sink to where the, the water goes above my nose. And I get just enough to like, right? And I start coughing. I start gagging. And when I start gagging, I start vomiting. I'm sorry. It was not good. And so I'm like, I look like a mess out here in the middle of the water. And I'm like, I got to get a little farther. So I, I start, start doggy paddling a little bit more. And I go to sit my feet back down. And it happens again. And I just cannot get to a point to where I'm safe. And in that moment, I was desperate. I was desperate to put my feet on the, on the ground. I was desperate to get some air, to be able to vomit in peace. Like, I was, I was, I was desperate, y'all. And see, eventually, obviously, I made it. But see, when you are drowning, you are desperate for air. You need it. You crave it. Oh, y'all, wait for it. See, when you, oh, when you are in the midst of your storm, and you're in the midst of the struggles of life, and you are desperate, what are you reaching for? Who are you reaching for? Y'all, oh, see, tonight, this is the thing. You need to reach for Jesus. Jesus is going to help you through that fire. Jesus is going to help you when you feel like you're drowning. Jesus is going to help you in the midst of that storm. Y'all, you may feel like you're do doggy paddling, and you, don't, you ain't got no hope, but this is the thing, y'all. Jesus is right there. You just got to go a little bit farther. Shore is right here. You can put your feet down if you just keep going a little bit farther, y'all. That's all I would tell myself. I was like, y'all, Andrew, don't give up. You can't drown in front of everybody, y'all. You got to keep going. You got to get your feet down. Oh, y'all. So tonight, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with that. Uh, see, here's the thing. Your suffering will put you in a position to help others. And our suffering molds us into, into who God wants us to be. Guys, I'm going to pray. Pastor Richie, Pastor Richie, you can go ahead and head up here. The man, the myth, the legend. Anyways, I'm going to pray, guys. Father God, I thank you so much for this opportunity to speak your word tonight. Lord, I pray that if, if it helped one, God, it was a success. Lord, I pray that you just continue to help us in the midst of our storms, in the midst of our struggles. Lord, it's in your name I pray. Amen.